Hello, my name is John David, and I am the writer, producer, and the performer of the Mafia Hairdresser Chronicles. So you've been listening to my podcast, John David and Goliath, so far. And you know that my Goliath is just working through my fear, and that's just tedious. Most people would give up. Why did I not give up, and why am I not giving up now? Well, as I stated... When I decided to move out of Chicago, I found the Boca Raton to be the perfect place for me. I didn't have to build a clientele per se. They had tons of clients. Uh, there was buzz around the property. I had friends I could stay with until I could uh, start working there. And things did not turn out good. The Boca Raton was not busy because when the Walter Astoria left, They took their old phone server and the new property put in a new phone server, but it required fiber optics. So that means retrofitting the whole palace, if you will. And that was going to take a year, but they didn't tell the employees. They didn't tell the members. They didn't tell the guests. They just limped along at their business and everyone suffered, including the Boca Raton. LLC. So the investors were losing money, which was MSD Partners, and the Northview Hotel Group was losing money right from the board get-go. Um, when they opened December 14th of 2021, they opened late, yes, because the phones, and then they continued to pummel their employees with no information about why they weren't making money, and they continued to pummel the employees making them show up for work when they weren't going to make money from tips at the restaurants or in the hair salon. They weren't going to get clients because the clients couldn't book appointments for their hair appointments and the restaurants couldn't book up patrons to go to the new restaurants. It was just too hard. And it's just a ridiculous mistake. Goliaths are a horrible thing to have to go through. Those are these awful things that we all have to face in life. I think I first suffered from depression uh, years and years ago. I had just broken up with my last boyfriend who I just had dinner with in Fort Lauderdale last night. We were still very good friends. It was, that was just my last time. I was done. I was, you know, in my fifties and I was going, I I, I just can't find someone who wants to go the long haul with me. And you know what? I can be kind of perky in relationships. So I was probably a little shrewy and a little bossy because, you know, maybe I'm mimicking my mother when she was alive. I used to think, well, she got her way. So I'm going to do it her way and just make sure I guide my husband and make sure he's doing the right thing because I know what's best. Of course, that is no way to do a relationship and I get it. So I'm going to be single for the rest of my life. And I moved into a one bedroom apartment. I had closed down two businesses. I had a speakers bureau called Made in Chicago Speakers Bureau. I had a partner, Jean, and we stayed friends until the day she died. But I just gave her the business. I, she was just too tough to work with. And she's in heaven now. But she would say, yeah, she was tough to work with. So I closed that business. And I had a consulting business where I was consulting in the salon and spa world. I was a social media consultant. So I closed that down. And then I started to work a little bit more full time doing hair. But I left the salon I was working at. And I opened a salon suite on Walton Street in Chicago, where I still work two days a month. And I moved into a one bedroom apartment with a great view, but the apartment was uh, set up to be a little bit more of a consulting thing. So I was going to consult, but not in the salon and spa industry. I moved into kind of general consulting and social media. So I did a lot of video in my apartment and all that stuff. So it was a great thing. But I think the changes and so forth were so quick and so at me and financially it was so scary. I just was a little afraid. 
it was a Goliath I wasn't prepared to do. And I ended up sleeping a lot and I ended up not being happy. I didn't want to do anything socially. I kind of isolated from my friends. I let my ex have all the old friends and I just walked away from everything. And that's so not like me. I'm very social. I am I love my friends. I love my people. And here I was just crawling under a rock. And I didn't realize till after about a year, I go, oh, this is depression. <laughs> and it's normal. I mean, if you live in the city or if you just live and you, you know, you are living under whatever hard situations you're living under, you could be, you know, living on the south side of Chicago and with little chance of education, little chance of getting out of your situation. You could be rich and their money doesn't help you be happy. You could suffer from depression. But in regards to this current story I'm telling you, I want to admit and tell you I suffered from depression June 1st of 2022. I had just come from moving from Chicago to Florida in with my best friends who are breaking up unbeknownst to me before I arrived there. I don't think they knew they were breaking up, but I moved in there and then my best buddy is giving me a cold shoulder. He's not even talking to me because he's going inward, not discussing with me. And we're two guys. We don't really talk (laughs) about our feelings to each other. We just have a great time. And that's how we relate. Just like normal idiots, I guess. And um, so that was tough. And so I went through the breakup with his wife and we're such good friends over it. And we, he and I still don't really talk sad. I'm sure we'll one day be friends again. And then I had two businesses. I was starting online businesses and they both failed. So that was a waste of money and time. And then I had to get my own apartment and my own car really quickly. And then I finally secured the job at the Boca Raton, my dream job, my retirement job. And then they didn't open for three or four months after I was officially hired and taking the Michelin training courses. And then when they opened, it was two days a week and I was so slow. And then I was going into financial debt, paying more for dog sitters. I was still having to work in Chicago, which I still love. And I'm still thankful for that. And uh, then I found out the phone lines were down and then I did a whistleblower intervention with my bosses. And we agreed that I would work another month and a half and then leave my new apartment with my new furniture. And I would take this job. It was I, I very risky, but I took it in North Carolina, packed up my dogs and moved to this little cabin in the woods uh, right across the little two lane highway from the resort and spa where I was going to work for the next six months to build up my clientele for Florida. It was agreed between me and the managers, the salon and spa managers of the Boca Raton, that I would continue building my clientele there. And then I would be welcomed back when I had to officially reapply to my job at the Boca Raton. Sadly, I didn't get a contract, but I will tell you how legally I have it over them on that situation. But when I first moved to North Carolina in this beautiful cabin in the woods with my two dogs, with everything I would need for the whole summer, um, and I left my beautiful new two-bedroom, two-bath apartment with all my new furniture, I just felt depleted. I felt what the F am I doing? This is so crazy. And so if this was you, you can imagine this is so outside the box. This is so not normal. And your friends are going, you're doing what? That sounds crazy. Why don't you just get a different job in Florida? And believe me, I looked and I tried, but there is no jobs to be had, especially for a hairdresser who wants to build a clientele and especially not for a 60 year old. You know, I'm, (laughs) I can do consulting work again, which I didn't want to start that business. And I can do hair. That was the first and foremost two top jobs I could get. Other than that, it'd be telephone solicitation for, forget it. I'm terrible at sales. So I'm in this beautiful place and I've, I'm with my dogs and the dogs are kind of 
loving the hiking every morning, but that's all I did. I hiked every morning for the next six months with my dogs. We traveled from North Carolina, which was a shorter trip. It's only 11 hours from North Carolina to Chicago, as opposed to two 11 hour drive days from Florida. So I cut down driving days. Oh, there's my dog shaking. Um, so everything was fine, but I still suffered from depression because it was just too much, too fast. I was just a little sad. I got no new writing done. I, you know, I had my new book that I wanted to finish. I thought, oh, well, in the mountains, I'll do that because I'm only working eight hours a day at the, at the resort. And by the way, I was busy every day. And when you're a hairdresser and you're suffering from depression, you can go to work. And you are concentrated on other people, concentrating on other people, and you're fine. And then you go home and you just drink a little bit too much, you eat a little bit too much, and you sit on the couch and you veg out on the TV. That was my MO. Every morning, get up, pee, walk the dogs in the mountains. And that, those mountains were so therapeutic. That job was so therapeutic. I will thank this gold member till the day I die for giving me this cabin in the woods to heal. And that's what I did. I healed in those mountains with my dogs for the next, I'm going to say three months. And then I started to do things with the other staff members. I started to go out to dinners and go on hikes with them. And, and I, I really healed. So I'm just thankful for that, that I had that space and it was outside the box, but it does give me power to realize like, you know, I don't need all my stuff. I don't need my, uh, my apartment. I'm not any of those things. I've told you that before. Let me just reiterate that I had lost my health insurance about mid uh, season working for the Boca Raton I was supposed to work full time and then get health insurance from them and that would be awesome but that didn't work so I didn't have health insurance I couldn't go see a shrink I couldn't afford a doctor um I still to this day have to go get an eye appointment and get some work done on my teeth and I just I can't afford it I can't do what I need to do for my own physical well-being I just have to make do if I have a toothache I have to let it ride if I have uh something wrong with my eye, which I'm looking at right now, I can't go to the doctor. I really blame the Boca Raton Resort and the managers for that. I, I resent that. If you or anyone are facing your own Goliaths in your lives and you want me to address that on this podcast, you can email me at John David at mafia hairdresser dot salon. That's J O N hyphen David at mafia hairdresser dot salon. And if you have comments, email those too, or put them in the comment section of your favorite podcast app. And please don't forget to subscribe and like and rate. I know so many of the employees and the guests and the patrons, as well as the current and former employees of the Boca Raton may want to comment. And I just ask you to please email me at johndavid at mafiahairdresser.salon. That's J-O-N hyphen David at mafiahairdresser.salon. I cannot answer everyone, but I'll try. But back to my story about working at the resort in North Carolina. I worked there. I built up a big clientele in the mountains, the Appalachian Mountains uh, in North Carolina. And I had the best time that summer and the summer in Chicago, too, because I'm still there working there once a month, once a, a week a month. And everything was great. By the end of summer, I knew I was coming back to the Boca Raton to my apartment, my beautiful apartment on the beach. And I was going to resume my work at the Boca Raton and I was going to be busy and yay, work for the next six or seven years and be really, really happy. And I was so sure of it, even though I didn't have a written contract with the salon or spa manager 
They called me three times that summer to ensure I was coming back. Every time I got the call, John David, are you coming back? Yes, yes, I am coming back. I have phone records from that spa, from that salon to me on my phone. The phone records will show they called me three times over the summer to make sure that I was coming. They nailed down my date. I said, I'll be back to work uh, November 14th or 15th. They're like, good, because the customers are asking for you. And that will be great. We can't wait to welcome you back. So I have a verbal contract, plus I have the phone records. Yay. Not only did they break a contract, when you hire a hairdresser, the hairdresser assumes you have working phone lines. They broke that contract. And not only that contract, but they broke the implied contract that I was going to be welcomed back. I was packing up my stuff, getting ready to move back to my apartment, saying goodbye to the uh, North Carolina Resort and Spa, where I had been doing nails too. I did uh, manicure and pedicures and hair. So that ensured that I was super busy. And I was saying goodbye to the North Carolina clients, but all the Florida clients who were going back to Florida said, I will see you at the Boca Raton. I was ecstatic. I was going to take that clientele with me. So a week or two before I'm to leave, I emailed my bosses and I reapplied officially through the HR of the Boca Raton and said, Hey, I'm coming back. Looking forward to it. Um, as agreed upon, I'll see you November 14th, 15th. I'll, that'll be my first day back. So I didn't hear from them, but about a week before I was supposed to pack them and go, the Boca Raton HR sent me a pat letter stating, yeah, you're not welcome back. I was pissed. I'm glad I was pissed because that was a little healthier than being crushed per se. Um, and I was a little crushed, of course. But I was like, this is so wrong after they strung me along. Like, I would never have worked in North Carolina, left my furniture. I should have filed bankruptcy, then closed up my apartment six months prior. But they strung me along, those motherfuckers at the Boca Raton. The manager and the spa manager didn't even return my email. This, these women who said, I'm their family didn't even return my emails. What the fuck? I, I, I just can't even believe how inhuman these two women were to me. So I packed up and I came back and I didn't know what I was going to do. I started looking for different jobs, but right away, both the um, North Carolina salon and spa where I worked was calling me. They're saying, hey, your Florida clients are trying to book with you in Florida. And they say you're not working there. I said, yeah, I didn't get my job there. So I have nowhere to work. So I did start interviewing at other places. And they, no way. They're, I just couldn't do it. And um, for whatever reason. And then some of the clients from Florida that I built the clientele up there in North Carolina called me directly. And I said, I'm so sorry. I have nowhere to do it. I can do you in your home. And, you know, I just had to build a kit. You know, you have to buy a cart and all that stuff to travel with. I didn't have all that travel stuff. So I, I did do that, but it just didn't work out. It was just too hard to go into people's homes and so forth. I still go into my, um, uh, the gold member who owns the resort and spa in North Carolina. I still go across the street when she's in Florida. So I've been here from November, uh, December, January, and now it's February, end of February of 2023. And I, have just told my landlord, I have to move. I'm going to put all my stuff in storage, meaning whatever I have left. And I'm telling you, I will have no furniture. My new beds going out the door, I'll sell it for a song. Um, I will file for bankruptcy, I believe. 
I'll just take my computers and my microphones and go back to North Carolina and just live in North Carolina indefinitely. And sadly, I haven't been able to visit my dad who has Parkinson's. My brother is taking care of him. Uh, sadly, I can't do much else financially until I get back on my feet. Thank God that the cabin is still mine. I did continue to work in North Carolina in November and December and January because I was on my way to Chicago doing the two day. When I got back to Boca again, I didn't have my job at the Boca resort so I didn't quit Chicago, of course. And so I have to drive two days there, work a week, drive two days back. And then I'm off for three weeks in Florida trying to find a job. But on the very first trip back in the uh, beginning of November or the end of November, beginning of December, I get a call from the North Carolina resort and they said, Hey, can you work any days at all? Cause your clients love you here that the North Carolina clients, I said, by the way, yeah, that sounds great. I'll work a few days on either side of Chicago. So this is what I do every month. And I've been doing it for four months is I drive to North Carolina. I stay in the cabin and I do clients for a few days. And then I drive to Chicago, do clients for a week. And then I drive back to North Carolina, do clients for a full week. And then I drive back to Florida. This is insane. And this is all because the Boca Raton and the salon and spa managers are assholes. <laughs> And they really effed up my life and career. So th this is what I have to do. And you know, the economy sucks. You know, it's really hard to get a job. You who are listening are going through your own troubles. And if you have any troubles, I want to know about it. I want to put it on this podcast too. You have to have these crazy stories as well. I cannot be the only one trying to make a buck, trying to make a living. Uh, in this crazy world, but it's working out again. I'm absolutely, um, hopeful that what I have to do, f all the filings I have to do against the Boca Raton, it's all going to work out. I'm going to probably get a settlement from them. I'm probably going to, uh, you know, be okay. I'm not, I'm only asking from them to, you know, return my seven year career. What is that financially? Well, we'll work that out, but I'm okay. I have a roof over my head. I am not like so many people who are living in tent cities. I'm not like so many people who have lost their jobs. I have two clients who don't have jobs anymore. I, do not charge them full price. I charge them a little bit and I'm kind of tearing up right now. And these women, two women come to mind, are so down on their luck and they can't get the jobs. They, they've been working for over a year and they've gone into their savings and they've gone into, uh, they've lost their condos that they owned. They've lost so much. And that's just people I know of my clients. But I have other clients who are wealthy who had to cut down. They can't get the jobs that they had before, CEOs of companies or so forth. They are out of luck as well. But you see, there's just so many people in the United States right now that are uh, uneducated or had job jobs and storefronts are closing. Uh, businesses are closing. I mean, just think of the, the Microsoft, the, even the Dell Corporation, Michael Dell laid off tons of people in the tech industry. Um, everybody's hurting. But the problem is it's the rich people like Northview Hotel Group with their boards who make terrible decisions that are affecting people, but they are still making the same amount of money, if not more than they were. That is a fucking tragedy. I guess I didn't really even tell my story this time. I told you so much more about me 
And I'm going to let that lie for this episode and just let you sit with that. And I'm asking you, if you have your own Goliath journey, please send me that information uh, to my email at jon-david at salon. And I will add your story to this podcast. And even if you want me to interview you on the radio, so to speak, I will do that too. Um, and that's that. So that's it for this episode. Thank you for listening. I know it was maybe a little boring this time, but this is where I'm at. I am in the process of filing some, uh, stuff against the Boca Raton. I'm in up to my neck with this and I'm not going to quit. And I hope you are with me on this. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, until the next episode of John David and Goliath. And in the next episode, I am going to tell you much more about Northview Hotel Group. They are what I call a locust company. And I'll tell you why in the next episode. Hello, dear listeners. I am telling you, you can listen to a plea to Michael Estelle that I made. I sent him a video and I'm making that the next episode. Uh, episode 4.5 and I hope you watch that it's about seven minutes I talked to Michael Estelle I sent it to him and his team at MSD partners I got no response but I'll let you watch it and view it so you can see me and then the last episode will be episode five right after that and um, I'll let you know whether I threw in the tell or not thanks for listening Hello, dear listeners. In the future, I may have to have a GoFundMe page to raise money for lawyers, but right now I am asking you to support me and support this podcast by purchasing my books in paperback or ebook at amazon.com or ebooks at barnesandnoble.com. Mafia Hairdresser is based on my time in LA when I was a private hairdresser to a cocaine trafficking couple and a very well-known Chicago mobster in the 80s. The Glowstick Gods, the sequel to Mafia Hairdresser, is about the 90s when I was an A-list party boy and I traveled around the world chasing the best raves and parties while observing the demise of the entire scene when crystal meth came into being. And if you'd rather listen to my fabulously dangerous life instead of reading about it, you can just listen to season one and season two of this podcast, The Mafia Hairdresser Chronicles. Just go all the way to the beginning. And season three will be out in 2024. That's 2024. Hey, thanks for listening.